Okay, so have you ever like uh, been in a meeting, right? And it's just dragging on and on. Yeah, tell me about it. And then out of nowhere, someone whispers, buzzword bingo. Oh, yeah. Like it's the secret code to inject some fun into the, you know, the monotony. Totally. It's amazing how a simple game can change the whole vibe. Right. And that's actually what we're uh, diving into today, kind of. This whole idea of, well, it's called podcast bingo. Okay, I've heard of that. Yeah, and I bet when you hear bingo, you're probably thinking like, okay, pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, I guess so. But trust me on this. There's a lot more going on here than uh, than you might think. Really? Oh, yeah. We're talking clever coding, smart design choices. You even get a little peek into the world of open source. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So basically, we're looking at this readme.md file, which is kind of like the instruction manual, if you will, for this podcast bingo thing. And on the surface, yeah, you've got your typical bingo card. But instead of numbers, get this, it's full of these phrases that you might hear on, well, a podcast. Makes sense. So the goal, be the first one to shout, bingo. It's not just about getting five in a row. There's this competitive thing happening. Uh, I see. So there's a real sense of urgency. Exactly. I can just imagine everyone like on the edge of their seats listening for those key phrases. Oh, totally. It's like it takes this passive thing, listening, and makes it super active. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got the basics down. But what really surprised me was the code behind all of this. Seriously. I mean, I wouldn't expect something like this to be too crazy complex, right? Right. Wrong. The creator didn't just make some static bingo card. They built the whole game using this thing called, and get ready for it, client side code. Client side <laughs> code. Okay, now you've lost me. I know, right? Sounds kind of techy, but it's actually super cool. Okay, so break it down for me. What makes it so special? So imagine this. You want to play a video game, right? You usually need the console, like a PlayStation or whatever, to play it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, with client-side code, it's like having the whole console built right into your web browser. Everything's self-contained. So no need for extra stuff. Exactly. You could grab the code, share it with friends, and you're good to go. No server, no crazy setup. The creator really made this thing user-friendly. That's really impressive. Right. And it's all put together with this really elegant mix of, uh, you know, your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Wow, it's like they use those technologies to make something that's not just functional, but actually pretty fun to look at. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of fun, we got to talk about the whole randomness thing. I mean, you can't have bingo without it, right? True, true. It's got to be random. This creator knew that for sure. Hmm. They didn't just use some random number generator like you'd expect. They went all out to make sure things were truly unpredictable. Okay, now you have to tell me more. What did they do? Get this. They actually used a visual clock face in the code. Wait, what? Yeah, like the angle of the second hand on the clock. That's another source of randomness for them. You mean like the clock on your computer? Yep. Pretty wild, huh? That is so clever. So every time you create a new card, it's like one of a kind. Exactly. That's some next level thinking. <laughs> totally. And for the listener, that means every game is a surprise. You never know what you're going to get. Talk about replay value. <laughs> Okay, so we've got incredible coding, mind-blowing randomness, but hold on, it gets even better. Remember that redme.md file we talked about? Well, it mentioned something about a dual license. A dual license. Okay. Okay, what in the world is that all about? That's where we leave the game itself and step into this whole other world, the world of open source software. Okay. Basically, open source means the person who made this thing is sharing it with everyone. It's about collaboration, you know? Like, here's my creation, do what you want with it. Ah, uh, I get it. Yeah. So other people could actually take this code and build upon it, make their own versions. You got it. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. This one person's choice to share their work could lead to all these new and creative spins on the game. It's like planting a seed, right? You never know what it might grow into. Exactly. So where were we? Ah, yes. Open source, this whole idea of sharing and collaborating, you know, it's really kind of cool when you think about it. It really is. It's like this giant think tank where everyone can contribute. And in the case of this podcast bingo thing, it's like the game itself is just the starting point. I mean, who knows what people could do with it? Exactly. You could have versions tailored to all kinds of podcasts. Like imagine a true crime bingo card, right? Oh, yeah. With squares like the butler did it. Or <laughs> uh, what's another good one? Oh. Evidence goes missing. Exactly. Or how about for a cooking podcast? Recipe fail. Not enough salt. They used baking powder instead of baking soda. 
I love it. I mean, this is what it's all about. Technology meets creativity. Then you throw in that community aspect. Just awesome. And to think, it all started with one person deciding to put their work out there for everyone to use. Pretty inspiring, right? It really is. It just goes to show you, you never know what kind of impact even something small can have. Maybe this podcast bingo thing inspires someone to create the next big thing. Totally. It's like that saying, the biggest oak tree started from a tiny acorn. Love it. Okay, so we've covered the code. We talked about how they made it super random and, of course, the whole open source thing. But before we move on, I got to ask, what's the thing that really gets you about all of this? Like your biggest takeaway? You know, for me, it's the ingenuity behind it all. We use all this stuff every day, right? Games, websites, whatever. And we don't even think twice about what goes into making them. It's like we take it all for granted. Exactly. But when you actually peel back the layers like we're doing now, you see all the thought, the clever design choices. It's pretty amazing. It's like discovering this hidden world that's been there all along. And it makes you appreciate the creativity, the craftsmanship. It really does. And on that note, I think it's time to start wrapping up this little exploration of podcast bingo. You know, it's kind of wild when you think about it. We started with this uh, this game, Podcast Bingo. Right. Seems so simple on the surface. Totally. And here we are, like, talking about the inner workings of the Internet, open source software, all this cool stuff. It just goes to show you, sometimes the most interesting journeys start in the most unexpected places. For real. And as we kind of wrap things up here, I keep thinking about this whole idea of, like, hidden depths, you know? Yeah. The stuff we don't always see right away. Yeah, like there's this whole other world beneath the surface, whether it's a game, a website, or just like everyday objects. Exactly. And when we actually take the time to, you know, to be curious, to dig a little deeper. We start to appreciate the thought, the creativity, mm -hmm. all the work that goes into, well, everything, really. Totally. It's it, like the next time you're scrolling through your phone or whatever, take a second and think about all the people who made that possible. The designers, Bingo. the coders, the engineers. It's pretty mind-blowing. It really is. And I think that's a good place to leave it for today. This whole idea of curiosity, you know? Yeah. Don't be afraid to look a little closer, ask some questions. You never know what you might discover. Until next time.